Hey everybody, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today I want to talk to you about the fundamentals underlying the technique of liquid-liquid extraction. Now, I'm not going to discuss conducting the technique so much today as I am the fundamental laws and behaviors of substances which allow us to use the technique in the first place. So let's get started with that. We're going to talk about liquids which don't dissolve in one another. And when this is true, we have a special word in chemistry for them. We call them immiscible liquids. Now, these immiscible liquids form two distinct phases when mixed. They separate from one another, just like the oil and the vinegar and salad dressing would. And when this happens, dissolved molecules can partition back and forth between these two phases and ultimately establish an equilibrium in which they are distributed across them in a very specific way. Now let's begin by comparing the behavior of two different compounds within the same system of immiscible liquids. So I've got two beakers here, and in the first beaker I'm going to add some water. And in that water I'm going to dissolve a fairly high polarity solute, so one that is relatively hydrophilic or water-loving. Now if I were to add to this another solvent, an organic solvent, which is immiscible with water, Let's say something that's less dense, so it's going to ride on top of that layer. Over time, an equilibrium will ensue in which I have a distribution of my solute, a little bit in the organic and a little bit in the aqueous phase. But this equilibrium is not evenly distributed. There's more compound dissolved in the aqueous phase. Now let's take a look at what happens when instead I add an aqueous layer to my second beaker and then dissolve in that a lower polarity solute. Then to that mixture I'm going to add some organic solvent as well. And I'm going to allow an equilibrium to establish itself. But my lower polarity solute has a higher affinity for the organic phase than for the aqueous phase, so it tends to spend more time there. And hopefully what you can see here is that my higher polarity solute is concentrated more in the aqueous phase, and my low polarity solute is concentrated more in the organic phase. This is a behavior that I can exploit to separate the two from one another. We have a way of quantifying exactly how much of our compound partitions into one side of our, our two immiscible liquids or the other. It's called a partitioning coefficient. And the partitioning coefficient is essentially an equilibrium constant. And here I've defined it as an equilibrium where my solute dissolved in the aqueous layer was my starting material, and my solute dissolved in the organic layer was my product, if you will. When this is true, I get a partitioning coefficient, or an equilibrium constant, which looks like this. The concentration of the solute in the organic layer divided by its concentration in the aqueous layer. Now, taking a look at our higher polarity compound, that means its partitioning coefficient is equal to its concentration in organic over aqueous, or a relatively small number over a relatively large number, meaning it has a fairly small partitioning coefficient. However, my lower polarity compound has a partitioning coefficient that's also its concentration in the organic divided by its concentration in the aqueous layer, but this time that means a large number over a small number, or a large Kp as I've defined it. So what's important here is that the Kp values are as different from one another as possible. The more different they are from one another, the more effective my liquid-liquid extraction will ultimately be. So now let's watch this phenomenon take place. I'm going to take a single beaker this time, and again, add some water, but now I'm dissolving my mixture of both compounds in the same aqueous phase. To that, I'm going to add my organic solvent. So now I'm going to have two different phases into which my two different solutes can partition. And recall from our earlier discussion how these two solutes behave, with the higher polarity solute accumulating in the aqueous layer and the lower in the organic. So over time, as my equilibrium establishes itself, very clearly what's going on here is I've got more low polarity solute in the organic phase and more of my high polarity solute in the aqueous phase. So separating those two different compounds from one another is as simple as separating the two layers within my beaker. 
and we have special glassware we use to accomplish this in the lab, which we'll talk about in our next video. That's all for now. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you on the next video. I'd like to thank everyone for making my YouTube channel such a success by coming by and clicking that like button and sharing with your friends. I'd also like to remind you that if you'd like to see even more instruction in organic chemistry, I have a new course coming out in collaboration with The Great Courses. It'll be available starting in October of 2014. And to find even more information on my new course, go to www.chemsurvival.com. That's all for now, everybody. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you on my next video.